Hey guys, Hackersploit here, back again with another video and in this video we're going to be looking at Pentest Box. Alright, so a lot of you guys have been requesting me to make a video on Pentest Box and uh, rightfully so, this has the potential to change the way penetration testing is done on a Windows based operating system. Alright, so I apologize for the late upload today. I hope everyone is doing well, but uh, that being said, let's get let's get started. So if you haven't heard of Pentest Box, let me just break it down really, really simply. I have the website right in front of me. The link will be in the description for you to obviously check out and download. But before that, you want to know what exactly is Pentest Box. So let's get started there. So Pentest Box is an open source pre-configured portable penetration testing environment for the Windows operating system. All right, so it is targeted to work on Windows instead of uh, instead of Linux, for example, or Mac. Now, again, some of you may be asking, well, why on earth would uh, I want to use this uh, in, you know, as compared to running virtualization software or dual booting? So you can see they answer that question on the website. So why another penetration testing distribution? So I'll tell you, Pentest Box is not like any other pen testing. Uh, it's not like any other Linux pen testing distribution, which either runs in a virtual machine or on on a dual boot environment. It essentially provides all the security tools as a software package. Uh, that's the keyword there, as a software package, and lets you run them natively on Windows. Uh, so this is effectively this effectively elim eliminates the requirement of virtual machines or dual boots on Windows. So I think now you can understand the significance of such a tool. And the reason I've uh, I've not covered it so far is because I was waiting for their latest update, which is the 2.3 update, which I know has been out for a while now. And I just wanted to make one uh, in regards to that. So again, it essentially answers your question. So if you are, for example, running a computer on low resources and you don't want to use a virtualization software like VMware or VirtualBox, then Pentest Box, uh, you know, will pretty much uh, offer you uh, the penetration testing tools that are that you uh, are currently or are commonly bundled with uh, the penetration testing distributions like Kali Linux or ParrotOS, just to name a few. All right, so. Uh, essentially, it is targeted for Windows, so it only works for Windows and essentially comes in a software package. So it was created because more than 50% of penetration testing distribution users use virtual machines to run those distributions on the Windows operating system. So again, this gives you an idea of why this was created. And it's because uh, they wanted to perform uh, or they wanted to provide a native uh, solution for penetration testing for Windows because with Linux you have uh, the options in terms of uh, Kali Linux and ParrotOS but for Windows it's always been that you can't use it for penetration testing uh, natively. All right so if you look at the features some of the features I, I really uh, find uh, are awesome uh, come in terms of performance. Now as I said because it's not running in any type of virtualization it's not even hitting your performance any bit. And you uh, depending on the programs you're running, maybe you're running Metasploit or Burp Suite, uh, that will impact your performance, but not the virtual, uh, any, any type of virtualization. Second thing is no dependencies required, so you don't need to install anything. Uh, you can easily just install it on Windows. Uh, it's portable, which means you can carry it on a USB stick. You can run it off a USB stick. You can extract the files off a US USB stick. It then comes with Linux utilities like, uh, for example, my favorite are curl that most, uh, you know, that you would, uh, you would not expect to find. It then also comes with awesome text editors like Vim, which is fantastic. All right. So it doesn't have any driver issues because again, uh, as you know, with Linux, most of you have complained about the graphics driver issues, but with this, you're not faced with a graphical uh, user interface per se, but with a terminal or a command prompt that uh, really, really comes that, that you'll come to enjoy. It then has a modular type uh, type of setup where you can install, uh, you can install any other tools using the tools manager that is present inside the pen test box. Uh, but essentially, this allows you to install, update, or uninstall tools which are not already included in Pentest Box, which I'll be talking about in a few seconds. So you can see it uses less memory usage. All right, so Pentest Box runs uh, runs on the host uh, machine without uh, the need for virtual machine. So it needs only 20 megabytes for launching, compared to at least two gigabytes of RAM for running a virtual uh, machine distributions, which is absolutely correct. As I've mentioned, a virtual machine cannot run on anything below two gigabytes. And for the other features, you can see that it comes with a version of Mozilla Firefox, which is another feature that I wanted to explain. It supports 32-bit systems and obviously 
um, it can be shared on the network. So you can run this uh, this folder or this tool shared on the network. So if you're, for example, in an, an environment like a an office or your school and you want to share this, you can easily do it. That being said, let's get started with Pentestbox and uh, you can just go all the way to the bottom to get started with downloads. And if they offer two versions. You have your your normal version without Metasploit and you have the, the version with Metasploit. So I would recommend that you get the version with Metasploit to experience it fully. So it'll give you information here in regards to how to get it set up. So for for, as you can see here, there are two variants of Pentestbox, one without Metasploit and one with Metasploit. Antiviruses and firewalls need to be switched off to install and operate the version of Metis with Metasploit. All right, so make sure that you turn off uh, your respective antivirus. I have Windows Defender here. Now I'm running this on Windows 7 and that's because for some reason, I have really huge issues with uh, Windows Defender on Windows 10. Just, you know, keeping live real-time protection on even though when, even when I turn it off. And I, I'm not going to go into my registry and disable it from there, then install this. So I thought, why not just show you this on a vanilla operating system like Windows 7, just to show you that it can indeed work on uh, on an operating system with minimum resources. That being said, uh, the, the the installer will extract the the files uh, to the C drive under the pen test box folder. And uh, for its proper functioning, it's going to tell you here, do not make any changes to the directory. Make sure it's saved on the C drive. All right, so I have downloaded the file already. It's free and you can see I have it on my desktop. It is the pen test box with Metasploit version 2.3. And it is quite large, it's about 2.4 gigabytes. So for those of you who are asking, uh, when compared to Kali Linux, it's slightly larger, but I think it offers a great uh, idea or ideal of functionality. So you can check it out for yourself. So once you've extracted the files, it's really very simple to install. Just double click it, as you can see, and just hit extract. I've already extracted, so I don't need to do it again. I'm going to go into my C drive here and um, I'm going to go into my pen test box folder. That's the folder you want to go into and voila, this is where pen text, uh, this is where pen test box is stored and uh, this is where you can launch it. So if I launch it and I would recommend that you run it as administrator, that just so that you don't run into any hitches, you can see there we are, welcome to pen test box. And you might be asking yourself, well, what in the world is this? And uh, what tools can I use? Well. Uh, it's slightly different than than what you might expect with Kali Linux because you have slightly less tools, but they've installed the most important ones, uh, Metasploit being one of them. And to launch them, it's pretty much very, very simple. It's going to just prompt you that, uh, it's just going to prompt you here. And uh, you can use your Linux commands like list and the default directory is your desktop, which is awesome. And if I was to just type in the msf console command, now of course, uh, I'm not sure that the database will work. Uh, but you can see that if you look closely, you have Ruby. So it has Ruby and Python pre-installed, which is awesome. And you know, as you know, Ruby is pre-required to run uh, Metasploit. But there you are, Metasploit console is running you know, with the latest version. But as I said, I'm going to be testing it intensely, intensively uh, throughout a full penetration test. And then I'll be letting you guys know my review of Pentest Box uh, once I've uh, I've actually understood whether or not it can actually perform in the field. You know, enthusiast tech aside, we want to actually see if this can replace virtual machines in, in the field. So there you are, warning, no database support, just as expected. I'll be looking into that. Uh, of course, I've not configured everything wholly, but I just wanted to give you guys a head start to understand what exactly is going on here. All right, so if you look in the bin folder, uh, this is where all your tools are gonna to be exist. Uh, this is where they all exist. And uh, if you left your firewall, I mean your antivirus software on, it will have deleted some of them that it considers malware. So for example, uh, if you look at uh, the fact that you have 7-zip, you have Aircrack NG, which is awesome. That means you can run Aircrack here. Uh, you have Android security, so you have your Android applications like uh, the JADX or the SDK, which is awesome as well. So it comes with all the important tools like uh, the APK tool for uh, reverse uh, for, for reverse engineering. You have the Atom editor, awesome. We'll be looking at that in a second. You have your BEF framework, your better cap burp suite, awesome. I'll be showing you that uh, just right now. Firefox. Uh, also, this is Firefox portable information gathering. You have Nmap. You have your the Harvester. All the tools that you'd find with Kali Linux in terms of information gathering are here. Uh, you have the Metasploit framework, you have Nmap password attacks, you have the John the Ripper. So 
pretty much all the tools exist in the fundamental regions of penetration testing hashcat uh, john um the john the ripper and uh, you also have your reverse engineering tools right there so you can check that you can check all these tools out and again you might be asking is launching it the same yes it is so uh talking about the other tools like for example the awesome thing the thing i love about this is the fact that it comes with sql map it comes with nikto and for the love of god it comes with zap which is awesome so uh, as you can see metasploit is working awesome which uh, i'm pretty uh, pretty much uh I was pretty sure, sorry about that, that you guys were not going to believe, but indeed it is working. So that's Metasploit. And again, as I said, I'm not going to be going through it. If you want me, get, if you want me to perform a penetration test with this, just let me know in the comment section. I just want to show you that uh, these tools do work. Uh, so you can you can use the default Linux commands there. Uh, and uh, for example, if we were to launch Firefox, it does launch its own its own version of uh, the portable the portable version of Firefox. So if I type in Firefox right there, the UI is going to open up Firefox, the portable version, and voila. Now again, it's going to use the the cookies and the history in regards to the version of Firefox that you have installed. I just wanted to point that out. Let's uh, take a look at some other files. So for example, nmap, uh, and we can scan my router here. Let's see if that does work and map and um, there you are by the way we'll, i'll be looking at in the other videos uh how to upgrade the tool so if you if you click on this option here while that's performing the scan you can see that you can launch a new console you can go into your settings and uh, i would not recommend mucking with these settings because this is uh well what you would consider a linux emulator and if you want me to go ahead and take a look in, into these menus and what it deals with, uh, you know, you can let me know. But for now, just don't play around with this menu too much because uh, there, there is a, a huge margin of error in terms of the things that you can do uh, in ter and uh, obviously the mistakes you can make. Uh, as for that menu, I would recommend that you just leave it alone right now. We'll be taking a look at that later. You can add more, uh, you can add more consoles if you want. And uh, for some reason, this scan is taking uh, a while now. But what we can do is we can let that uh, finish up here and we can launch the other tools that I wanted to show you guys, which again is pretty awesome. Um, so let that complete and uh, I'll wait for that to complete. In the meanwhile, let's look at some of the other tools that it does come with. So one thing that you have to understand is it's going to be using the Windows uh, alternative programs just so that it runs natively. So what do I mean by this? If a program is like Zap is available on Windows, they're going to use the Windows version, all right? They are not going to use uh, the Metasploit console version for Windows because uh, uh, it doesn't exist, right? What I'm talking uh, about is SQL map, for example. You can see that SQL map is a script and a Python script. So that will come in its original version. There isn't any EXE version. All right, so let's see if this is done. If it isn't, I'm just probably going to cancel it. Uh, probably I should have actually specified the scan here. So I'm just going to cancel it and we'll be looking at how to perform a penetration test with this, but later. Um, we've tested Metasploit, so that does work. Uh, let's have a look at another tool like Burp. How about Burp? Let's try Burp. Uh, sorry, Burp Suite. Um, you have to launch it with the program name and there you are burp suite opens up in a new program and as you can see it's using java which means uh it is running the burp suite.jar file let's see if it does launch there we are it is the community edition just in case you're wondering so i'm just going to cancel this and i want to exit and yeah there we are so burp suite does work let's look at some of the uh, important tools that one would require um uh, Zap is not that important. Uh, Wireshark, how about Wireshark? It would be awesome if they can bundle Wireshark with this. Wireshark, there we are. Yes, it does work. Uh, so for some reason, this program, uh, the runtime. All right, so these are the errors that I was talking about uh, in regards to to the tools that you, you can see right here. So if I just close this one, I want to close Wireshark. We'll be looking at how to troubleshoot these errors because a lot of people have been actually commenting on my videos telling me that they want to learn how to configure it correctly because it does it it is a great uh, option in terms of uh, penetration testing let's look at some of the other tools again if you want me to perform a review of this i'll be making one uh, and also we'll be looking at how to utilize this in a penetration test that being said let's take a look at some of the other tools that we can use um nothing important here that is you know that stands out in uh, let's try atom this would be really awesome if it does work the atom editor 
uh, it, it has split it and uh, yes it is working uh, I'm not sure whether it's launched it it is using the exe as I've said they're going to be using the Windows alternatives or the Windows versions just so that it runs natively without any hitches All right so let's give this a few seconds to start up hopefully it does and as they've mentioned it's not virtualizing any any type of operating system you are running it core so the performance should be much better uh, when compared to using something like uh, VMware with Kali Linux. But I'm still to see if this can replace Kali Linux because that is a question of its own. Um, let's, uh, for some reason this isn't opening, so I'm just going to give that uh, its time and we can launch a few other programs here. Um, we've tried the Metasploit, we've tried Nmap, John, I'm pretty sure the password cracking tools will work just fine. It comes with Rainbow Crack uh, and you have your Hydra, which we've already looked at, Find My Hash. That's an additional one that isn't very, very common. Uh, forensic tools, uh, well, pretty much, just to be honest, they, they have passed probably the most important tools that you will be using on a frequent basis if you're performing penetration testing. Now, can this replace Kali Linux? Well, we have to categorize this into, um, into several sections and test it uh, accordingly. And that's what I'm going to be doing in the next... Uh, video in regards to pen test box. We're going to be reviewing it critically and comparing it to Kali Linux and I'll be giving you my final verdict on whether or not it can replace it. And the categories we'll be testing for are number one, ease of use. And when we talk about ease of use, does it have a graphical user interface? Is it user intuitive? Does it offer the authentic Linux experience? And can you perform a penetration test with it? The second uh, thing is the the uh, the upgradability of the tools, which they have, they've, uh, as they've mentioned with Pentest Box, is possible. You uh, indeed can use uh, or can upgrade the tools uh, within. And the third thing is, uh, are the tools reliable and do they do they work without any hitch? That's what we're going to be talking about. And of course, you are you are using a Pentest Box with one exception. The exception being that you have to turn off your uh, your antivirus software, which is a downfall because you know, uh, why, why would you need to turn your antivirus software off even if you're using it for a short period of time? It does pose a potential threat uh, with the time in which you have the uh, antivirus software turned off. All right, so this video is kind of an introduction to Pentest Box. It's a tool that I want to feature on the channel because I think it has a lot of potential and I'm sure you guys can really en enjoy it. Uh, that being said, I'll be seeing you guys in the next video. If you like this video or you found value in it, please leave a like down below. If you have any questions or suggestions, let me know in the comment section on my social networks. And I'll be seeing you in the next video. Peace.